I'm going to present to you this documentary on the life of Geraldine McCarran from Derry. And just a bit of the backstory about how I came to do this episode. Um, as people will remember, last year we did the um, Adoration in Derry. And after that, I happened to be in Belfast and walking down the Falls Road and very strangely and finding myself in front of uh, of the Adoration Chapel in Derry, the Sisters of Adoration Chapel in Derry, that fostered the faith of so many. And, you know, I felt I did a video on the fact that our Lord isn't happy with the reality that we have we're closing places where he is adored, where he can work on us. People think we go to adoration but it's also a time in adoration where our Lord can work in our souls. If we pray ourselves with our Lord, he can work in us. But John, Geraldine's brother, had come to the adoration in Derry and had seen my video in Belfast. And he called me and he spoke to me about uh, Geraldine's life, miraculous life. No doubt about it. Going to our house and reading what she wrote as a teenager, seeing how she loved the faith and lived the faith and all of the different miracles that uh, will come out in this documentary uh, there's no doubt about it this woman had faith um, so after that conversation I said look I must get in touch I must I must um, reach out to him and I suppose I got left by the wayside until I met him and on the walk to Knock and he approached me just as we were coming in to Knock and he said I, hi Robert I'm I'm John do you not do you remember we spoke on the phone and I took a moment and then I said uh, I spoke to you about my sister and then of course I, the conversation was so interesting I said yeah I, I need to I need to touch base with you I need to get up to Derry we need to talk about you know your sister so this is how a bit how the documentary came to be now I will say something and I hope some good Catholic media can take this up. I'm an amateur blogger. I do most of my video recording with things like GoPros and iPhones. Uh, because I never really set out to be a blogger. This was just on the fly really at the time. So I do have a good iPhone but the, the, the footage isn't the best. I do acknowledge it and I, and I hope somebody... Some Catholic news news organization or media will be able to do this documentary justice and go and interview John and Imelda and do a better documentary on Imelda's life. Because I do think it's worth hearing. It's worth hearing this conversation. So before going on too long, I give you this interview, which I did um, with Imelda McCarran, uh, Geraldine's mother, and John McCarran, Geraldine's brother, up in Derry. At the start, we went out, went out to Ardmore uh, Cemetery where she's buried and she died in 1996. So please enjoy this this documentary. Please leave your comments below and let me know. And if anybody is listening and can do a better documentary, I, I really encourage you because I think there's so much more to this story. There's so much more. So many stories in Derry. There's so much more. And I'd like to knit them all together. Um Everybody heard Thomas Gallagher's interview and I think a lot of people are realising there's so much that we need to uh, know about the faith and how other people experienced it. So anyway, enjoy this documentary. God bless you. Yeah, so we, it's like a, we'll, we'll leave it as a, as a conversation. Mm -hmm. So are there are tragedies that start in people's family, but I wouldn't call this a tragedy. Uh, no. I've never looked on it as a tragedy, Robert. A couple of people had said to me at the time about a tragedy, but no, no, I see the hand of God in it. That morning, and she was laid out in the oratory. Yeah. And the people, the adorers came in. Yes. And came in to see her. And you know, while it was in a way sad, but it was beautiful, yeah. it really was. And she was laid there in the oratory with the Blessed Sacrament and that morning at one time I, I went up the, the corridor to the oratory from the other part of the convent and I smelt this beautiful smell like a perfume mm. and I asked the nuns I told the nuns about it 
And they said they would not have been using anything. And that was a Sunday morning. They wouldn't have been out cleaning anything. I forgot to tell you that. And that was beautiful, her laid out. It really was. And the Mass, somebody said to me, it might have been a priest, that that was unusual to have a Mass said within an hour of Of dying. dying. And her daddy was there and I was there and Jim, who lost his daughter, was there and the nuns were there and um, the Mass was said for her and her laid out in front of the altar. Mm. Now, wasn't that beautiful? Yeah, yeah. Tell me, was that where she, where her, fu- where that mass was said? That was where they would have had adoration. What in the- um, no, the adoration chapel was right beside it. Okay. You see, they had a chapel yeah. where the Blessed Sacrament was exposed, and then a door into the oratory. Okay. So it was next door to the Adoration Chapel. Okay. You know, yeah. it's just a doorway in. Yeah, yeah. And um, and uh, as I said, the lovely tabernacle. I might have give you a picture of it there. Yeah. Uh, and that that uh, I think it was a priest said to me that was unusual. Yeah. They have a mass said, you know. Yeah. Within, within an, an hour. hour. And tell me, would you have gone to Adoration the day before when you arrived to that? Geraldine, uh, the nuns told me. They had adoration that night into the small hours that we arrived, and she wanted to go down to it. Yes. And uh, the sister said no. She knew we were travelling all day, and said no, you know. But she wanted to go to adoration that night. Yeah. And that was the night she died. Yeah. You know. Oh, wow. Mm. Yeah. Well, look, we'll, we'll, we'll keep all of this. I'll, I'll, I'll put these all together in the mm. in the video afterwards. Aye. So I'm joined here today with John McCarran, Imelda McCarran, and um, this is literally an incredible story that happened to us based out of the, the adoration that happened in Derry. And we're going to delve a little bit into it, but I just want to put it in context. Last year we had the men's adoration in Derry and John contacted me about the story, a story related to his sister, Geraldine. And it was so amazing that I said, we're not going to do this over a Zoom call. We said we'd come up to Derry and do this amazing story justice because I think we owe it to Geraldine to to get her story out there. It's 2023 and she died in 1996. Mm -hmm. And so we were just going to, over a cup of tea here, (laughs) um, go over the story uh, as best to, in a conversation form, and uh, leave it leave it recorded for future generations, um, you know, and keep Imelda's story alive. So, Imel, um, Geraldine's story alive. Imelda, if you just want to kick off, you know, a little bit when when she was born, her childhood, your family, and uh, we'll take it from there. Yes, uh, Geraldine was born in nineteen seventy, and um, from babyhood, uh, she was dogged with that by asthma. And she would have suffered quite a lot. Um, she had a bad cough and, uh, you know, things weren't easy for her. She was the first, or um, was first of how many children? Or no? Yes, she was the oldest girl. Um, John was the oldest and then Geraldine was the oldest girl. Maura and Siobhan and George. And Geraldine was, she was a very spirited girl. And she was, she was very conscientious. She was outgoing. Yeah. But she had a deep, deep faith, and I, I know, I know she, she loved Jesus and Mary, and um, she, she was just a very good girl. So she, she came through school, and it, it wasn't easy. And um, she actually, she went to the, she got her her good qualifications in secretarial work, and then she went on to university, and. Um, Despite having the asthma, she, you know, she, she, she got on with things and she lived her life and she loved, she loved going out hill walking and she has a book and she's written a lot of stuff there um, about out on the hills and her, her love of nature and her realisation that um, all was due to God 
and she loved Ireland and she loved Derry. (laughs) (laughs) And um, I think I think even when she was in uh, in America, I think she actually missed the rain in Derry. She, because she seemed to have an amazing life, like a typical Irish teenager, you know, with her aspirations. Uh, she she went to university, uh, she went to America, but um, the faith seems to have been very, very rooted in her life. Because I'm reading what she wrote in, uh, in, in 1986, so she would have been six, 16. That's right. Yeah, so a girl of 16 to write what she wrote. Uh, where she's having this deep relationship with our Lord, with God, you know, understanding where she is. She's, the faith obviously meant something very, very dear to her. Oh, it did, it did. And her family meant a lot to her too. And um, she said to me on a couple of occasions that she had a holy family. And on the night that she went to, we went to the convent and we were coming out from the, the night prayers and Sister Mary Dolores, there was um, a wee holy water font of the Holy Family. And Sister Mary Dolores told me that Geraldine had told her that she had a holy family. And at, at Christmas time, the Christmas time before she went away, um, I asked her what she would like for Christmas. And she said to me she didn't want anything. She said she knew she was getting a lovely Christmas dinner. And she said we would all be together and that was all that she wanted. Yeah. And that was the kind of her. She was never demanding in the house and anything we got for the house, she was just always, always happy with it. And she was good too with her, um, her you know, her sisters and her brothers too. And she would have, um, you know, organised things for them um, you know, she was always thinking, thinking about them, and she also um, corresponded with with them. Um, you know, John, what she wrote to about the prisoners. Oh, I, I, she, Jenny would have been, um, she'd have been writing through Amnesty International at that time, um, in, in, in the nineteen eighties, nineteen eighties, yes. Yeah. Um, uh, she she would have written to people that's all across the world. She'd have written to different people who were imprisoned, um, in jails or whatever people that she had never met before. People that's just names that she had heard about, but she was just really concerned, in general, about people living in poverty. And and some of her writings there, she talks about um, trying to to get educated. Mm-hmm. So that she could contribute to alleviating poverty in whatever way she could. Yeah. So she would have written to people mm-hmm. who 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 um, in different parts of the world who would have been engaged in that at that time in um, whatever activities uh, and would have ended up in jail for whatever reason and and Jillian would have written to them just um, yeah. out of a, a kind of a. a I suppose a, a sympathy for them and um, just to try and support them and, and encourage them. Yeah. And, and what year did she go to university? Uh, what, 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 what? Oh, I'm trying to remember. She finished up probably around 1995, so whatever that few years, maybe four years before that, um, I, I didn't look at the dates or anything, yeah, yeah. but um, she really just had finished university when she went to um, over to her friend in Boston the second time. So that was just really um, a few years before that, which was, would have been in the 90s. Yeah. Mm. yeah. It would. Yeah. And, uh, and, and through all of this, you know, this is a girl that's so well prepared for a career. How did the story of vocation come up in her? Where did this start to, thr- to thrash out in her life uh, that she wanted to be a nun? Yes, she told me that when she was younger that she wanted to be a nun. But I think she wanted to go to university yeah. too. <laughs> so she put that off. But I think it was America where she made her final decision. Yeah. And she saw things in America. She told me she saw things that she didn't like. You know, people living on the streets and 
a man covered in terrible sores living in a cardboard box and stuff like that. And I think she made her mind up when she was in America. And she went to a, a retreat, a La Salette. I forget exactly where that was. Yeah. And, and she then she headed off to the Sisters of Charity, Mother Teresa's Sisters of Charity. She did. When she came back here, um, she wasn't long back here, and she told us one Sunday, it was um, the Sunday beginning of Advent, and she was searching for, for um, you know, different orders, and mm. she was being very particular about what order she would go into. She wanted to go into an order where the nuns wore their habit, and she said to me the rosary prayed in the convent is very important to her too. So she wrote to this, the missionaries of charity, and she spent a week both in their Dublin convent and, and, and in their London convent as well. Um, and she loved that time, for she told me afterwards all about it. But um, the nuns then, they had to refuse her because they said to her that with her asthma, that in other countries that she probably wouldn't be able to get the medication, yeah. you know, that, yeah. she, that she needed, yeah. that she would need. And she was very disappointed at that. And, and she had asthma all her life, she said? All her life. Oh, from from she was a baby, yeah. she had, yeah. and you know I'm sure she she did suffer plenty, yeah. uh, you know going go, going through all those years, but it didn't stop her, you know. She and people said to me afterwards, she really lived a full life. Yes. And so she did. Yes. Uh, you know, for her short years. Yes. And she was very adventurous. Yeah. <laughs> her way off to America on her own and. There was no problem to her to hop on a plane and yeah. go somewhere, you know. Yeah, yeah. She, she. That's that's what seems to come across is this, 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 uh, this girl with such a an a zeal and an adventure and a love for life, um, and uh, uh, such a, a deep connection to the Eucharist. Yes. Which is really the point. When I heard this story about the Eucharist, I said, I mean, and this all connected to the men's adoration in Derry. I said, why is, why is this story coming to me at this moment in time? So mm-hmm. I, I suppose we're going to go a little bit into her connection to the Eucharist, mm-hmm. to her vocation that she gave. Um, and I suppose we could just uh, tell our viewers a little bit about, about mm-hmm. that journey towards where she ultimately ended up. Yes, we had started um, a, an adoration night here in the church. And Geraldine would have went to that too. And that was around the time too that she was trying to find out, you know, what order she would go into. And she was having difficulty um, in finding out about different orders, but she wrote to a lot of orders, um, you know, throughout the country. Um, And then I happened to get a book and there, there were names in it of the various religious orders. And she and I were looking through the book and I spotted an adoration order. And at once I felt very hopeful because of our adoration nights. Yeah. And that is the order that she went to and she yeah. she was joining. Yeah. Mm. So the name of the order is... Uh, Family of Adoration. Yeah. And the mother house is in Paris. And they have uh, the convent in the Falls Road as well as the one in Ferns. Yeah, because I think many people will know how famous this order is in Ireland uh, because uh, when um, Martina Purdy and Elaine Kelly That's right. entered in the Falls Road, it made mm. media t- attention it, all over Ireland. It did, it did. That's yeah. right. And, uh, it did. Uh, we see today, sadly, that the, this order is winding itself up in Ireland, that yes, uh, we have the that convent in Ferns is it's closed, closed now. It is, and uh, and the, as far as I'm aware, they're not allowed to take new sisters in in Falls Road either. No, no, yeah, no. So uh, it's it's kind of uh, interesting how this story is appearing after the Derry adoration that you contacted me uh, to, that we talk mm-hmm. about um, your sister Geraldine because uh, there's a miracle that happened here in this house. 
And I think we, we, we do need to talk about that particular miracle. Uh-huh. Um, and if you just want to, 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 to take our viewers through that miracle itself. Mm. Is that about her rosary beads? Yes. Yes. Do you have them there? We'll just bring them. I do. Um, uh, they're over there. Leave them? Yeah. The over, they're over there oh, by yes. the television. Yeah. Mm. Yes. Um, what, Robert, do you, what do you want to do with those? Yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll hold them up in a second. Just take us through the story of these, of what, of what yes. happened to them. Well, when, when she was trying to find the order that she wanted to go into, um, things weren't happening very well for her. And one night, I knew she was feeling down, you know, because she didn't seem to be um, having any success. And I said to her, well, Geraldine, you and I will kneel down and we'll pray a rosary with the intention that God will lead you where to go. Now, we always said the family rosary, but from she started to search uh, for the her, the order that she would go into, her and I would also say um, an extra rosary. So I went in um, to get her wee rosary beads that were in the next room. And I lifted them down from the top of the wee cabinet. I, I didn't notice, but I put them into her hand. And she opened her hand, and right away she saw there were a wee child's first communion rosary beads, a silvery white. And when she opened her hand, she saw that they had literally changed overnight to a gold colour. Yeah. And... Oh, she was she was so happy and so excited, and we both we both took that as a sign, you know, that God would would lead her to wherever she was meant to go, and while I believe that after after she died, I felt that there was a deeper meaning than that too because she had said to me, I don't know what God wants me to do or where He wants me to go, and God was taking her to Himself. Yeah, mm-hmm. because she she uh, she she went she gave she decided to go into the Sisters of uh, Adoration in Ferns. And mm-hmm. uh, what day did she go down to, to? You brought her down there. Yes, uh, the twentieth of April, nineteen ninety six. Her daddy and I traveled down with her. And I just say this too: the the night that night that Saturday night at mass. At the Vigil Mass, Father Diamond had mentioned about her and had prayed for her. Mm. And the following morning, he prayed for the repose of her soul. Mm-hmm. And it was the same with the neighbours here were waving her off in the morning. Um, so we arrived down at the convent. The nuns were having their tea. It was about six o'clock. And we said to them, you know, finish your tea. And after that, the nuns gave us her tea. And we, we after that, Geraldine took us out around Ferns and she took us down and showed us the Holy Well of um, St. Moog. And we came back up and we had night prayers. She sat up at the front with the, the nuns and she sang with the nuns, <laughs> and um, she tur- she actually turned round and I was telling you about the the sudden deaths. And yeah, there was a man there whose daughter had died very tragically, and she had met him on her come and see, and I saw she turned round and gave him a great big smile. Yeah, and we went out of the of the chapel. And we, we we then we separated for the night. She was going to the nuns upstairs to where the nuns um, sleeping quarters were. And Sister Dolores had very kindly insisted that we'd stay the night in the convent. We were going to go somewhere else and get um you know an overnight stay. And about half three in the morning. We woke up, we heard a, a bit of a commotion 
and was Sister Mary Dolores came to the door and she told us Geraldine was having a, an asthma attack. Mm -hmm. So we went down to the room. She had managed to go and alert Sister Dolores and we went down and Geraldine was already unconscious. Mm -hmm. And there was um girl there who was in the convent for a while she had thought of becoming a nun and she tried she tried to give her resuscitation whatever um, the ambulance was on its way but and father Fitzpatrick who, who lived next door he was called and he gave her the last rites yeah. and we um we were going to go then to the hospital mm -hmm. with um, with the ambulance. We were going to follow the ambulance. Her daddy and I, the ambulance had parked out in front of the convent and the ambulance wasn't moving. We went back mm -hmm. and she was already gone. Yeah. Do you just want to take out the picture there where the ambulance parked? You have, there was uh, something that you mentioned to me. Yes. Did you just hold up the picture? Yes, that, that, there's two, but that might be the best one. Yeah. Robert, would we say this? Yeah. Yeah. The two, that's a kind of close up. So where the ambulance was parked was outside the convent on the other side of the roadway, which was a mass path years ago, the nuns told me. Now, Geraldine, when she'd come back, from her come and see what told me about this wall and she was very taken with it. On the wall, in different languages, in Irish, English, German and whatever else, were the words in all the different languages, the Master is here and is calling you. Mm -hmm. And that's where Geraldine was taken. Yeah. So she, was, she literally died in front of the sign, the Master is here and calling you. That's right. That's wow. right. It's it's quite amazing when you look at this uh, with her life, you know, looking for God, mm -hmm. lo looking to literally give her life to God, you know, to 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 uh, to see, you know, the, to see these rose the 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 rosary, uh, the miracle of the rosary that happened in this house. Um, but I also think you have a story in that rose, yes. and, and I think we need to get that story out as well. Yes, that's right. She had been to the convent and she came back. And she loved it. She was telling me all about it. Um, but she still was being very careful. And she had started in a novena to St. Therese, the little flower. It was a beautiful statue of St. Therese in the convent. Now, she hadn't told me anything about this. She had asked St. Therese if this was the order that she should go one day. Would she, St. Therese, send her a sign of a pink rose. Now, she said that even if the rose wasn't meant for her to keep, if somebody even put it under her hand for that short space of time, then she would know. And also, oh, she specified that this was to happen um, by a certain day, and I think it was a Thursday, uh, by four or five o'clock. Now, on that morning, I was going into the town and she said to me afterwards that she was saying to herself, maybe Mama will bring me back a rose. So when I came back about two o'clock and I was lifting out things that I had bought when I was in the town and I had bought a card for my sister Anne and on the front of it was a beautiful pink rose and... She said that when she saw it, that's exactly what she had in her mind's eye when she was requesting St. Therese. And she said, she said to herself, I'll wait and see if Mammy puts it into my hand. And I, again, as I say, I knew nothing about this. And I lifted the card and passed it across the breakfast bar to her and said to her, isn't that lovely, Geraldine? And it was then she told me. And the other thing about that is, the Novena Prayer to St. Therese is, O St. 
Therese, please pick me a rose from the heavenly gardens and send it as a message of love. And on the front of the card was the words, with love, sister. Do you want to hold it up? Mm. <laughs> That's amazing. I just think all of these stories, when you, you were telling me them, John, um, back last uh, November, and I just and I just thought all of the stories put together, you know, it's not coincidence. Mm-hmm. You know, with the miracle of the of the ro- of the rosary turning gold, um, you know, the sign um, of the rose, um, and her her search for God, her search for to give her life. You know, mm-hmm. she wasn't she wasn't uh, frugal in giving her. You know, she was she was definitely looking to give her life to God. You know, uh, she was yeah. because. As I said, she um, she waited until about a week before she was going away. Before we went around all the aunts and uncles, and told told them to tell them then that she, what she had decided. Yeah, you know. And she was totally committed. Maybe it was along those lines. Robert was kind of talking. That's that's what it is. Because afterwards, it was like God had arranged it all. That she had a last, said a last goodbye to everybody. Wow. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. That's, that's right. That's what it was. It was like she had said a last goodbye to everybody. And um, because they had said to her, oh, pray, f-, I said this, to you, pray for me, Geraldine. And she said, God love her. She said, I will sure I'll have nothing else to do. <laughs> And then after that, people put great store by that. Yeah. You know, yeah. whenever she died and and yeah. met God. Yeah, yeah. I. Because I think John, you mentioned that when she died, they laid her out in the in the convent there, in in Ferns. Yeah. And uh, one was it one sister that mentioned how lucky, or how, <laughs> and I thought, gosh, it's amazing how this sister is saying that to somebody <laughs> who's just lost their daughter. But just just take me through that story. Yeah. Well, that was, um, it was my father, Robert. And yeah. um, I was in America when all of this was going on. And um, just Geraldine phoned me about a week before she was leaving uh, to tell me because she, she kind of, she didn't tell me. I had no knowledge either. She waited until her uh, she had told all of the family, the wider family. But when she phoned me, I could hear the joy in her voice. Mm. That this there was so much joy in her voice, and I was surprised when she told me she was going into a convent that she wanted to be a nun because she was, as Mammy has explained, she was so outgoing and so adventurous, and yeah. um, but was leaving that aside and, and giving her life to God. And she was doing it with so much joy. Yeah, that, that, that I, I remember that very, very clearly. Yeah. But um, yes, and, and after she had died and Mammy was there, you can keep me right on this. Mm-hmm. Um, I remember you telling me that um, they brought Geraldine in and into the, the oratory. oratory. And they had laid out up on the, at, at the altar, at the, the front of the altar, a white sheet on, on the floor. And they, they had put the habit on, Geraldine, did they? Or? I don't think so, no. no. Right. But she was laid out with the tabernacle and the oratory. Right. The tabernacle was there. So, so they laid her out there in front of the altar and there was mass. They had mass. Yes. Aye. But... Um, one of the 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 more um, shall we say the the longer term nuns the the, the older nuns um, was standing and and daddy was there and the nun kind of came over to daddy and says to to me daddy um, you know you you're a very lucky man mm. and my daddy was kind of thinking you know don't feel very lucky at the moment you know yeah. what what's <laughs> But the nun says, you know, I'm here 60 something years and um, I'm waiting and your daughter comes in here and on her first night she's called it to heaven. Yeah. You know, and, yeah. and my daddy understood what she meant. He, yeah. he understood fully what she meant. Yeah. Um, because I do think that's the incredible story of her, you know, and I'm just, and, and, I, and, and I'm just 
trying to get the viewers to understand the story because we've had so much conversation already. I mean, her whole journey was towards a vocation uh, in, in deep prayer with the Eucharist. This is what she wanted to do. And, we, and you could read her writings when she's 16. You know, this, this is a girl who loved, knew the faith. You know, she, she was talking to God. She actually believed. And, and uh, t to see her immersed in that faith and to look for a vocation where she can give her life. It speaks to today's world where there's so much hopeless, hopelessness. Mm -hmm. You know, when we, our kids today don't have God. So we've given no. them phones, we've given them sex, we've given them alcohol, right. drugs. That's I mean, right. in the fact, in the sense that this is, permeates our society and sometimes it's even, it's even lauded. And, and yet we see such hopelessness. That's right. Do you know? And, That's right. And, uh, we, we, and it's amazing when we look at the life of Geraldine, uh, a girl at that time looking for God and, uh, and, and, you know, literally giving her life to God. And as soon as, as soon as he, she arrives, our Lord says, the master is here and is calling you and takes her away. <laughs> That's right. There was something very definite about it all because she, shortly before she was going to the convent too, she was up in the room. Now, she loved books and she said to me one time that she would love to have had her own library. Hmm. She was getting rid of those books that night and it wasn't costing her anything. Yeah. I had to come out of the room. Yeah. I couldn't watch. She was so definite. Yes. It was like, you know, she she was she was getting rid of them. Yeah. She had left them all out, and you know she said to me, um, I could take them and and to the town or or whatever. Yeah. You know, there was something kind of very very. You know, she wasn't going back. Exactly, exactly. Mm -hmm. She wasn't going back, no. and uh, and I think this speaks uh, volumes for her. And uh, it, and uh, and uh, I was just thinking, reading other saints, reading the life of uh, of Saint Therese, like uh, maybe she's not a canonized saint today, but she's mm. definitely a girl that speaks of faith, that mm. speaks of conviction, mm. um, speaks of her love for the Eucharist, and I think all of these signs in her life are are a sign to us as well, because mm -hmm. uh, we see so much hopelessness. And out of her death has come so much good. Yes, that's right. Yeah, and uh, you know, it's, it's, it's... Yeah, sorry. And um, Robert, um, will I say about uh, when she was in, in the boat? Yeah, go I, ahead. Um, the first time she went out to America, it was, she was her year out, and she worked for the Northern Ireland Tourist Board Office in New York. And, that, and then when she graduated, she went out to a friend... Um, in Boston, I think it was, and she told me she was out in a boat at Martha's Vineyard. She went all over the place. Yeah. <laughs> um, she was very adventurous, but she said she was in a boat and they were passing a lighthouse, and she said she clearly heard the words, be a lighthouse. And then somebody had given her a watch, and she said she was in her room and she was looking at the watch, and she said, she, again, she clearly heard the words, now is the time. Mm -hmm. Now, she was very, very definite about that. Yeah. And she normally wouldn't say things like that. No, she wouldn't make that. You know, yeah. no. no. And she got such people in America had written mm. when they heard. And did you read the way, um, the, what the... And the tourist board office when she was leaving, did you read the no, wee poem they no, wrote? Not yet. <laughs> That's very good. Yeah, yeah, I'd put it in the video. <laughs> it's like a, what did you call it? Um, a reference. Yes. It's nearly like a reference yeah, yeah. for her. Yeah. You know, she she was at a party. This is when she was in New York in the Northern Ireland Tourist Board Office. And she was at a party one night, and a girl, an American girl, she got into talking to her and the girl, it was the time of the Troubles in the north of Ireland, and the girl asked her where she worked and Geraldine told her the Northern Ireland Tourist Board Office. <laughs> and the girl went, wow, what a job. 
Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Couldn't resist him. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> oh, no, it's, it's good, it's good. It's an amazing story. Oh, she was she was very humorous too, you know, she loved the, the crack and all as we call it too. Mm-hmm, for sure. You know. Yeah. <laughs> but it's interesting the order that she picked. That particular order, mm. you know, has been uh, no matter how much our Lord has tried to draw people to it, and mm-hmm. uh, there seems to be, you know, a sad, a sad, the sad reality that it's it's not meant to be that that order survives in Ireland. I know. Uh, you know, mm. both Ferns and Belfast uh, are winding down, um, but I think it's I think the message here for Derry, uh, you know, the message that she's sending to Derry and to Ireland now is to turn to the Eucharist. You know, this is where, when you first called me, I said, what are the chances? What are the chances that this girl, this is coming out of Derry? Mm-hmm. You know, what are the mm-hmm. chances? And, what, and, and what, what is our Lord telling us with Geraldine's life? You know, and, and, and I was just thinking, it's the Eucharist. Mm-hmm. It has to be the Eucharist, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, there, is, there is no other way. It all, it's all tying together at this moment in time. You know, the, the more we walk away from our Lord, look at what we do to Ireland. It's, it's, it's nothing in comparison to the troubles in the sense that since the troubles have ended in our, in, in, you know, there's been, um, sadly, um, we, we look at the thousands of deaths from suicide, drugs, addictions. Mm-hmm. When people don't have God, they look for something else. That's right. That's right. You know. Well, she very much um, was... Um uh, her faith. Yes. You know, it was her family and uh, as I said, she she loved all her family and she told me that. Yeah. You know. Yes, it's incredible. For, for me personally, uh, Geraldine's death was a, was a profound moment in my life. Yeah. Because it, um, it, it brought me to a a reality of that, that I took a step back from um, my own life and, and thought about things and looked about things and you know it, the fact that Geraldine had in, in a way surrendered her life uh, to, to God mm-hmm. that even was was a personal message to me I took a personal message from that yeah and I um, I did then st- start to explore and, and develop my own faith and, and my own relationship with God and that came directly from Geraldine's story yeah um, and you know that that I'm, I'm still even to this day I still um, relate a lot of the 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 good that I'm living my life and trying to love trying to love yeah um, but I relate it back to Geraldine and, and to the example that she set for me personally. Yeah. yeah. You remember the day George was being graduating as a younger son? Yeah. In Queens. Uh-huh. And we you drove up, you drove in the car, you drove and your dad and me went up to the graduation. Mm-hmm. And um George and I had been to the convent once, but you'd never been. And Maura, who worked up in Belfast at the time, sketched out a wee map for you about Belfast. So we weren't long in Belfast until we discovered we were lost. <laughs> so we had arranged, Sister Mary Dolores happened to be up in the Belfast convent at that time. She was taking care of a sick sister. And I had been talking to her on the phone and we had arranged that after the graduation, we would call it the convent. But when we discovered we were lost, you said you would pull in. There was a gateway coming up and you said, we'll pull in there and I'll look at the map and see where we are. And you know what I'm going to say, don't you? I do. <laughs> I could not believe it when John stopped the car. We were at the gates of the Adoration Convent. Yes. <laughs> now, I, and the importance of that was... I said to John, we'll ask the nuns if we can park in here and then we'll take a taxi down to the graduation. So that was all right. 
When we come out of the graduation, Belfast was in chaos. There had been some kind of an incident or a bomb scare or something. And you remember we were very lucky to get a taxi mm -hmm. that took us back to the convent. And the taxi man had to go a very, very roundabout way. Yeah. But we got back and if we hadn't stopped at the convent first, we would never have got out of Belfast that night. Wow. <laughs> because when we got to the convent, it was a short distance then to the West Link. Yes. Yes. Now was that was our first stop from Derry. Yeah. We landed at the, the gates Christ of the, the convent. convent. Now the it was, road. Wasn't that amazing? Yes. Day? Yes. <laughs> and that convent is very, very special in the sense that it it, it had a beautiful adoration chapel. Um that sadly now closed to the public, uh, that, that, that was kind of a, uh, renewing the faith in the Falls Road in that area. And, um, and I really, really do think, you know, and I ask maybe Geraldine to pray for us in heaven, that we renew faith in the Eucharist, in adoration, uh, because it's a time for prayer. We see this mm -hmm. proliferation of mindfulness in Ireland. Mm -hmm. They're pushing mindfulness in work, I know. in schools. I mean, us Catholics, we don't need mindfulness. No. We need no. Christfulness. That's right. That's Christfulness. Right. To be beside him in the Eucharist, and beside him in prayer. And uh, and that's where I really feel Geraldine is pushing uh, that we don't forget uh, Christ in the midst of, of what we're doing in Ireland. That's right. Yeah. That's right. No, we, we have everything. We have everything. This one, This is a poem I was telling you about. Okay, so this is the poem from the tourist board, is yes. it? Yes, and this, they also included, um, attached to it was this um, garrison killer. He had wrote a whole spiel about New York yeah. and all the good things about it. Yeah, well I suppose we could just read it out here. Uh -huh. What a garrison killer forgot, but what I most surely will not, is to note how this place got a smile on its face when Geraldine came to stay. She spoke with the speed of a jet, charmed every person she met, and became in a year a treasure too dear that her presence will sorely be missed. So here's to a wee north of note who made her home place less remote to the Yanks who were blessed with one of the best Northern Ireland could never have could ever set, have sent. And that is uh, New York, July 31st, 1992. 92. That's yes. amazing. <laughs> and that was, she worked in the, that just be a convent, uh, grammar school, yeah. Thornhill. And that's, um, that was, they put that in the yearbook okay. when she died. Wow. Were you going to say something? Uh, she had You'll see in there, in that piece, Robert, she had gone to France with a group of students. Yes. So they've just um, remembered her there after she had been died. Yeah. That's amazing, so it is. The, the adoration's still going, isn't it, ma'am? Or, I mean, the, the adoration is still going. Um, that started around that time, around the time that Geraldine started going and it began here. We still have adoration here Aye, in it's the a parish. Kind of a different form, mm -hmm. but it, it still is going. Aye. Mm. So that adoration mm. has continued uh, um, even from the early days when Geraldine would have been there and right through now. It still continues in the parish. We still have adoration. Wh which parish is that? In St. Oliver Plunkett here in Strathfoyle. Okay. There were two men going around. You might have known them. They were going around all the parishes. And um, my wife was asked, and my sister was asked to, to go into the meetings. Who, who were the men? Um, John, somebody. Howard? Howard, I think. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh my, you're serious? Aye. They, they, but that was that's in recent years. That's okay. a few years ago. Yeah. And they were bringing adoration to every parish. But we had it here. Aye, well, it, it it kept on here. That's what I'm to, was yeah. John did, did yeah. John John did John Howard start the adoration here that Geraldine went to or was no, no 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 we started that there was a few of us got together at the time yeah and we started that 
uh, that adoration. But sorry, I I was only I just wanted to make a, the the picture clear. Yeah. You know, um, they came then, and it's in a bit of a different form now. Yeah. But no, it, it still continued. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Mm. That's amazing. Mm. I mean that 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 you got together and you started the adoration here. And I, I do think adoration, it fosters a greater spiritual life. It fosters vocations. It gives meaning to our life because mm-hmm. we're confronted with something that's greater than ourselves. Mm-hmm. Uh, and the time we spend with our Lord is never wasted. Mm-hmm. You know, he's, he's working in souls as, we, as, as they're in front of him. You know, I, this is what I find very, very sad about today. You know, a lot of our kids and teenagers, they'll spend their time looking at other stuff, mm-hmm. vice, whatever, mm-hmm. and there's not feeding their soul. Mm-hmm. You know, it's 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 doing the opposite. And yet, if we spend time with our Lord, how how much more He would give meaning to our life? You know, that's right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Aye. Yeah. But um, when you know. John, I've said this. John and Geraldine were both. He was he was like Geraldine too. You know, when yeah. he was holy and yeah. you know. <laughs> he still has. Still holy. He still has. Be. <laughs> but you know, Robert, this is what I that's what I said to you the other day. Children aren't like that now. No. They wanted to hear about God. Yeah. They wanted to hear. Yeah. But children are, doesn't seem to be like that now. I because I don't think I don't think uh, we've made it. We've made it serious for them to understand mm. how great this experience of God is. You know, because anything that leads you that's not that that they're following ultimately destroys them. I mean, the first whiff of 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 drug mm-hmm. use of I mean, they're on a high and they think, oh, my God, this is interesting. But slowly that leads them, you know, to a path that they're not happy with. Mm-hmm. And yet if we were able to open up to them the greatness of encountering God in their lives, how different people's lives would be. And I suppose it's a message for Derry in a way. You know, there, because you, you do find a lot of hopelessness, mm-hmm. and um, and and this is a woman, you know, Jerlyn was a woman that was giving great hope and great conviction. And I suppose that's the story. Mm-hmm. There's a story there to, that needs to be heard and uh, understood. Just at at the time of the adoration and shortly after, Robert, it did become more. Uh, I don't know. I saw a, a, a great need to share the story with you. You did because I knew and I, I follow you and, and I know what you're doing and what you're trying to do. And I thought, well, I'll share this with Robert. Yeah. Um, and 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 let him discern it and and, yeah. and let you think about it and and as if it was something that you wanted to pursue. Yeah. Um, because I I know that that is there. We're trying to bring greater attention and greater uh, knowledge and of the the Holy Eucharist and through adoration and, yes. and all of that and, and we can do so much good with that and within the church and, and beyond. Yeah. So um, so that's why I thought it was worth letting you know and sharing it with you. Yeah. No, it definitely is and I'm I'm absolutely sure from this story something will be inspired. You know, somebody will look on it, it will resonate. Maybe somebody the new Geraldine will 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 tell their story and there would be there will be more to come from this because um we hear a lot about Sister Claire Crockett and and, mm-hmm. and, and it's amazing to hear her story, but it's mm-hmm. also amazing to see her. She wasn't the only Derry girl. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know <laughs> with this amazing love mm-hmm. for our Lord. Yes. You know, That's really, right. yes. you know, th- this girl, you, I mean, I'm just reading all through what the stuff you was searching for meaning for our Lord. Mm-hmm. She consciously and she she precisely found where she needed to go. And our Lord called her at that moment. Mm-hmm. And uh, and if she was only there one day, there's a story in one day. You know, people can be there years or one day. That's right. That's what some of the nuns said. She lived her whole life in a few short hours. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and that, that's the incredible story that, that uh, we, we, we will tell. And uh, I think this is the start of, of, of more conversations. And let's see where, where it goes from there. Yeah. Do your videos go out all in different parts of the world? Yes. I'm wondering if somebody in America will tune into that. Oh, there's a big viewership in America. Where did she go? She was in New York. She was in New York. Um, and Fifth Avenue was the, where the tourist board was. And she was in, what do you call it, New Jersey? New Jersey. Uh, she, New Jersey as well. New Hoboken, New Jersey. Hoboken. Right? She lodged, you know, yeah. she lodged there. And then the second time it was Boston, wasn't it? Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Yeah. I, 
Yeah, so, so maybe if anybody remembers Geraldine from the 1990s, Geraldine McCarran, McCarran in, um, in New York or Boston, we can, we can <laughs> arrange an interview and, and to join, join She them. seemed to, um, what's the word for it, um, people, she seemed to leave an impression on people. Yeah, yeah. Somebody said that too. Mm-hmm, yeah. And one of the masters up at the school came down Master Hegarty, I think it was the time she died here. And, you know, teachers put that many pupils through their hands over the years. He says, but you always remember, Geraldine. <laughs> <laughs> and she was too, Robert. Um, she would have spoke out, you know, if, yeah. wasn't she, John? Oh, I... If she had a thought something wasn't right, she was very straight and honest. And if she thought something wasn't right, well, she would have said, yeah. you know... Yeah. <laughs> that's amazing it's amazing so there are tragedies that start in people's family but I wouldn't call this a tragedy yeah. no I've never looked on it as a tragedy Robert a couple of people had said to me at the time about a tragedy but no no I see the hand of God in it yes I do yes yes you were going to say something on that point weren't you I um Whenever, when Geraldine died, and, and as I say, I was in America, and Mammy phoned me, and it was 10 o'clock here, but out there it was 4 o'clock in the morning, and obviously the phone woke me out of my sleep, and I came out and answered the phone, and, and Mammy gave me the news. And it, it just, it, it took a minute for it to sink in for mm. me, because just getting out of my bed, and um, we spoke for a few minutes and then we parted on the phone and we hung up and I thought about it for a minute and what I did then I got down on my knees and I just I I blessed myself and and I said to Jesus I said Lord I'm not asking you to let me understand this just let me accept it Mm. All I wanted was acceptance. I, I, I didn't want to, to, to understand his plan, his hand in this. Um, I, 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 I just wanted to accept it. And, and I thank God that over the years he has given me that grace. I have had that blessing that Geraldine's death um, hasn't, hasn't had any negative impact on my life. If anything, it has, has been a very positive impact that I have seen God's hand in it mm. and I have trusted God with this and I have tried to, to, to react in a positive way to it and change my life in accordance yeah. with the, the good that, that, that God has given us and blessed us with in so many ways since Geraldine was taken. Yeah. Because that's, that's what was resonating with me when you gave me her story and, and I've heard so many stories but I just, I, I, I just felt the, the hand of God in that story. Yeah. Like literally, I mean, when we look at the photo, the, the mm-hmm. master is here and I'm calling mm-hmm. like. That's right. And the other wee thing I forgot to say too, Robert, that morning, and she was laid out in the oratory. Yeah. And the people, the adorers came in. Yes. And came in to see her. And you know, while it was in a way sad, but it was beautiful. Yeah. It really was. And she was laid there in the oratory with the Blessed Sacrament. And that morning, one time, I, I went up the, the corridor to the oratory from the other part of the convent. And I smelt this beautiful smell, like a perfume. Mm. And I asked the nuns, I told the nuns about it. And they said they would not have been using anything. <laughs> and that was a Sunday morning. They wouldn't have been out cleaning yeah. anything. I forgot to tell you that. And it was beautiful, her laid out. It really was. And the Mass, somebody said to me, it might have been a priest, that that was unusual to have a Mass said within an hour mm, of dying. Of dying, yeah. And her daddy was there, and I was there, and Jim, who loves us, daughter was there and the nuns were there and um, the mass was said for her and her laid out in front of the altar mm. now wasn't that beautiful yeah yeah tell me was that where she where her fu- where that mass was said that was where they would have had adoration what in the- um 
Uh, no, the Adoration Chapel was right beside it. Okay. You see, they had a chapel yeah. where the Blessed Sacrament was exposed, and then a door into the oratory. Okay. So it was next door to the Adoration Chapel. Okay. You know, yeah. it's just a doorway in. Yeah, yeah. And, um, and uh, as I say, the lovely tabernacle. I might have give you a picture of it there. Yeah. Uh, and that, that uh, I think it was a priest said to me, that was unusual. Yeah. They have a mass said, you know, yeah. within, within an, an hour. hour. And tell me, would you have gone to adoration the day before when you arrived to that? Uh, to Geraldine, the nuns told me, sh they had adoration that night into the small hours that we arrived. And she wanted to go down to it. Yes. And uh, sis the sister said, no, she knew she we were travelling all day and said no you know but she wanted to go to adoration that night yeah and that was the night she died yeah you know oh, wow mm. yeah just before we finish up this is a postscriptum because <laughs> let's let's hear the story about the shelves because we have to this is a good anecdote <laughs> and why you should keep your decorations up to the 6th of january <laughs> yes um when i with geraldine gone and her daddy gone now um, well, the family always come at Christmas time, and that's great. But whenever they go, I was feeling very sad, and uh, you know, looking at the decorations have reminded me of Christmas past. So it was about two days after Boxing Day, and I thought I'm going to take those down. So I took them all down and put them in the boxes and took them up the stairs, and the we covered at the top of the wardrobe where I would put them. I tried to open the door, but it had been painted some months before and the door was stuck. And I pulled and pulled at the door and I was saying, Geraldine, help me with this. <laughs> but I, the door kept just being stuck and I had to leave it all. And it was some time later um, because there were things happening and I forgot about them, but... On the morning of the 6th of January, when I was getting ready to go to Mass, I walked into the room and the doors were wide open. <laughs> <laughs> it was like she was saying to me, you shouldn't have been putting those away to the 6th of January. <laughs> and I haven't dared since then. <laughs> It's a good story. <laughs> I'm glad I remembered it. Yes. I could not believe it. I stood looking, and I'm the only one in the house. Yeah. You know. Well, no, I'm sure. I'm sure Geraldine pops around from time to time. <laughs> oh, listen, I'm keeping you back, but she knew a fella. He was a Protestant fella. It was at the university, Woolley, mm -hmm. from Belfast. Good fella. Good fella. And he actually wanted to be romantically involved with Geraldine, but she was having none of it. But anyway, um, what's going to tell you now? Maybe when, when Geraldine died, the things that happened, was it? Oh, that's right. Um, I thought then Willie got married and Geraldine was able to go to the wedding and all shortly before she went to the convent. But um, when she died, uh, later that night, I phoned Willie. And told Wally about Geraldine. And Wally came down, I think it was the next day, mm -hmm. and he told me, they used to have some great conversations, they were great friends. When They used to go out hill walking and stuff. And Wally told me that they had one time made this agreement, the first of them that went would let the other one know. Mm -hmm. Well, Wally said him and Marion... Um, and he said she was from the west of Ireland. Um, they were making the breakfast and they put a plate up on a rack at the cooker. Now, there was no heat near it. Mm -hmm. They heard this big crack mm -hmm. and they looked. The plate was cracked. Mm -hmm. They had to discard it. They put a second one up. The same thing happened. And he said that Marion, being from the west of Ireland, uh, said to him, you know, that's before something. That's yeah. some kind of a, a warning. Okay. You know, so I just thought we'd let you know that. So she's going around cracking stuff. To this was cost. before they knew she had died? No, she had she had died, um, um, Robert, you see. But Wally didn't know. But the, she died on that 
in the morning and I phoned Willie at night. Exactly. This had happened to Willie earlier on in the day and he couldn't understand this. Yes, yes. But whenever I phoned to tell him Geraldine had died, yeah. he put two and two together then. Yeah, and, yeah. You know? Yeah. And before your daddy died too, so the cups cracked out there. Really? Mm-hmm. I was having a, a cup of tea, it's another wee china cup, and I was pouring the boiling water, no, pouring the tea in it, and I heard this crack. And the cup was gone, and I said to your daddy, and he, his George wasn't well at this time, yeah. and your daddy said to me, God, that's strange. Then, sometime afterward, he came and told me the same happened to him. The cup cracked with him too, yeah. and that's, he died shortly after that. Yeah. Yeah. So I say she's going around cracking the delf. <laughs> Certainly <laughs> present. <laughs> there's so many stories around the life of Geraldine. Oh. Once you put them together, oh, yeah. there's a there's a story to be told. Oh, there is, there is. There was a wee American girl she was friendly with and um she was living over here and um Geraldine had called round and the wee girl Kelly wasn't in. And Geraldine was telling me then that um, when Kelly came around and she said to her, Geraldine, what did you mean? You left a note on my door saying, call round if it's not bucketing. <laughs> <laughs> oh so I shouldn't be telling you all them That's things. That's good, it's good. We got started. <laughs> it's all good. It's all good for the block. <laughs> anyway. uh, but it kind of gives you a flavour of what she was like. Yes, it does. You know, she, does. she had plenty of spirit. She does. She had, you she know. Does. She did. Aye. She did. Anyway, I cut it off here. Well, look, mm. we're going to wrap it up here, and uh, this is uh, mm-hmm. the first uh, the first interview uh, as we as we start exploring the life of Geraldine, and and just to get to make her known in Ireland, um, you know, this is the product of a conversation after the men's adoration in Derry, which had such a, a major impact on so many people, and it's only it's only starting, and uh, hopefully we'll spurt on the renewal of the faith especially here in Derry. And I, 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 I do think Derry has so much to offer. You know, there's so many conversations that have to be heard here in Derry. I, I put up the video with uh, Thomas Gallagher. Um, I've spoken with Emma Gallagher. She's done the Road to the Triumph um, um, video. And there's, um, there's, a, um, there's so much more that we have to, uh, to, uh, to show Ireland and show the world about the deep faith that gives meaning in people's lives. You know? That's right. And I think we're in the right times now for that. Yes. We're in very special times. We are. We are. And there's no doubt, uh, you know that saying, the deeper the darkness envelops, the brighter the light will shine. Yes. And you can see that. Yes. Can't you? You can. Mm. You can indeed. You can indeed. No, we're in those times. Yes. Okay. Well, thank you, uh, Imelda very much Robert thank you and thank you Thanks. John for your time You're welcome Robert thank, thank you for, okay. for doing this it's, oh indeed it's, yeah, it's a long time coming thank you very much <laughs> <laughs>